couple of quick things on, on, you know, just Syracuse getting the game over with, moving on. Uh, you know, we uh, met Sunday and got the game over with, but had a normal school day yesterday. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's kind of like what we said after the game. You know, they just uh, played. They played a little harder than us. You know, they outcoached us. They outplayed us, and and it happened on all three sides of the ball. So that's a huge disappointment. And. We're back to work here today to try to rectify that. You know, part of our job as coaches is to do everything that we can to, you know, to uh, get these guys ready to go and, and to keep them accountable for for what you know we're asking them to do, both on the field and off the field. And we didn't get that accomplished last week, and and uh, we need to get that accomplished this week. Moving on to Rutgers, uh, you know, same type uh, team as, as Syracuse. They're they're well coached. They're you know they're uh, they play hard. You know, probably uh, the thing that's most impressive watching their defense is is how hard they play and, and how aggressive they are to, to attack the ball to get the ball out. They lead the nation in turnovers. They've got 25 of them. I think we've got eight, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, you know, they do a good job of that. Uh, offensively, they control the clock, control the ball, and uh, special teams are extremely solid. So it, it's going to be uh, it, it's going to be a challenge to go up there. They're going to. It's going to be much like Syracuse. They're going to be fired up about playing at home. They're going to be fired up about, you know, playing the Mountaineers, and, and we're going to get their best shot. And if we want to win a championship this year, then we've got to be able to handle that. Uh, we didn't handle it last week, and we need to be able to handle it this week. Questions? You said yesterday that uh, Syracuse blitzed, I think, about 75% of the time, and you said that was more than you've ever seen. What do you typically do tactically to try to counter when a defense is that aggressive, and why didn't it work? Uh, they're smart about how they do it. You know, they keep a lid on it over top, which just means our job is to put the ball in play. Uh, you know, we, we didn't do a good job of, you know, some of it was so, uh, you know, unsound, you know, to where we could have seen it, you know, could have done a better job of attacking it with the run game, you know. Uh, didn't do a very good job of that, which that's, we'll put that on our shoulders on, on offensive coaches. but. And uh, we didn't side adjust routes very much, you know. We didn't do that very good, you know. And then we didn't we didn't win on fade routes, which when when you know just because they kept the lid on it, we were still able to get behind them and go. But we just got we got pushed out of bounds about 90 percent of the time, you know. So if we're if we're not able to attack blitzes with runs, if we're not able to side adjust routes, if we're not able to hold up, you know, when they did bring people, it still always ends up in a one on one matchup with the O lineman and the D lineman. And we weren't able to handle that very well. And then we weren't able to win on the outside, which poses some serious problems offensively. Dan, is the blitz a, a thing that teams are going to do to you or have done to you? Because like, if you can inflict all that chaos there, then that kind of derails you a little bit. Yeah, it, 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 it's, that's, that's nothing new. Right. Well, I figured that, but I mean, yeah, that's, I mean not, that's not characteristic. Blitzing is nothing new in football. And Are you sure? Yeah, they've been doing it for a long, long time. But seventy-five percent of big is a lot. Is a lot. Okay, which which I haven't faced that right. personally. And and I've been on a lot of teams that that handle blitzes better, and you make them pay for it. And and that's our goal offensively is is we want them to blitz, and we want because that 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 means there's less space behind them behind the line of scrimmage. And if we if we identify it and do a good job of you know, of, of handling it, then we could have very easily scored more than 49 points. And that, that's, we sat in here as an offense and we went through every play and we said, here's how you attack it. And if you guys would have done that, then we could have very easily scored 49 points and won the game. But we didn't do that. And we need to be able to handle it better. So, you know, it, it's, it's, I've been on, I've been on teams that handle it and, and it gets people out of blitzing. You know, if you handle it, then they quit blitzing. Dana, is there a, Something that that hinges on the quarterback play or wide receivers or it's everybody. Like I said, it, it, one of the biggest problems with what was happening was when they brought pressure and our O line just got whipped. And that that goes back to who was playing harder. And it was very evident to me on tape that they were playing much much harder than we were, and it, which is disturbing. Uh, you know, but that that's that's one area of it. Us calling plays is one area of it. Gino, you know, getting the ball out of hands is one area of it. Receivers adjusting routes is one area of it. And then receivers making plays downfield is, is something that we've talked about for a lot. 
Stedman made one play, and other than that, we were we were probably one out of ten. You know, and all those, those ten would have been touchdowns. But if you're only if you're only hitting on one out of ten, that's not very good. Was the sight adjustment uh, by the receivers the reason you weren't getting rid of the ball fast enough? On a few. You, I mean, that on a few. On a few. Not all of them, but on a few. Of them. Defensively, does Rutgers mirror what Syracuse typically does? Are they similar? Or are they completely different? Yeah, they're going to run. You know, they're going to run up. You know, they're going to have a tight end, the fullback, but then they're also going to get in three or four receiver sets more. You know, Syracuse didn't have to do that very much, uh, but they do get in three and four receiver sets at times. But they're still going to huddle and control the clock and run the power and, and try to grind you. You know, and then play action post you to. You know, to, to six, who's who's really a good player. Um, you know, but then they'll also, you know, run a zone play and just try to throw him a little slant over here too. So they, they try to get his the ball in his hands. You know, probably as much as they do some of their running backs. Look at his pass stats at all. I know you don't go back, but look at his stats last year. He doesn't run the ball nearly number six as much. Um, or is that a not yet or not every? Uh, I don't understand. The they, they ran him a lot wildcat stuff. Reverse. Oh, it's new. And he's hardly any carries this year. Yeah, well, when he catches what sixteen balls a game or whatever, <laughs> yes, I'd keep him out there at receiver too. You know, uh, they got two good young backs. You know that they're probably trying to get more experience for, and and uh, you know, but he's 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 being fairly productive at receiver. He's a good player. We we'll have we got to cover him. You know. He's out wide. We're going to be in situations where it's one-on-one -on -one stuff with corners. If it's inside, then you know we got to pass them off. You know, much like we didn't do with the tight end last week. You know, I mean, guy's an eligible receiver. You know, when he runs a route, we got to cover him. Receiver like that, would you think of putting just standing on him, or would you just stay? No, because he moves around a bunch. Okay. You know, I mean, he'll, he'll play inside and he'll play outside. You know, I mean, our schemes to have. The, the corners cover guys outside, you know, and load up the box and put them in one-on-one -on -one situations. But when those guys release, you know, you got to have stuff in the middle for safeties and backers to be able to identify what routes they're running and, and go cover them. And we didn't do a good job of that last week. From your experience, is a team more dangerous after a loss? Well, you're looking at two teams that are coming off losses, so. It really doesn't matter in this week. You know, I, I don't know. Do you anticipate I mean, them doing things differently because they are coming off a loss? I mean, no. I know you said you're not going to change anything. I don't anything. think so. And I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know what we're going to do differently either, other than get back to work today and get after them and coach them hard and keep them accountable for for what we're asking them to do in practice and, and with the game plan. I mean, that that's, that's what we've been trying to do, you know, and, you know, maybe yell at them a little bit more or, or whatever, but there's not a whole lot more we can do that we haven't been doing with them. We got we, we need seniors and, and upperclassmen to step up and take control of this team when things get tough. You know, which you know the the, the routine of the week's going to be the same. When it's really going to get tough is is when we line up and get hit in the mouth. You know, what are you going to do? Last week we didn't do anything. You know, this week we need guys to step up and and be the ones that are, are going to hit people back in the mouth. You know, and that's cold football. We've talked a lot about Gino kind of not, you know, needing to be responsible to put the team on his shoulders. Um, how hard is he on himself after a situation like that? And and how much, I guess, mentoring do you guys have to do in terms of not, you know, letting him be that hard on himself? Yeah, he, he takes it pretty tough. I mean, he, he got the guys together after the, you know, it means something to him, which is what you want to see. I mean, the guys that go to the locker room after a loss and, you know, hurry up and get dressed and get around and, you know, doesn't have that that look of a loss on your face. That's what you worry about. That's what that's what kills your football team. And we had that happen to a, on a few guys, you know, which which we addressed. But uh, you know, Gino's a guy that it means an awful lot to him, you know, and he he's going to he's going to he's going to bounce back and try to be the best that he can possibly be. But he can only be the best that he can possibly be. He can't be anything more than that. Your defensive front's not real big and it's not real deep. Are there options that, that Jeff and her lab have or just have to coach them up better? Or what can you do to stop the run? Because 
Syracuse obviously ran the ball pretty effectively. Yeah, you know, I mean, this the, the, they're 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 not coaching their guys any differently than they did last year. You know, minus probably a body or two. You know, um, you know, I mean, I know there's a couple of guys that that were here last year that were that were good players. You know. And if we're not replacing them with, with, with as good or better players, then we probably need to do a little better job recruiting. You know, so we, we got nine scholarship D linemen, you know, and we have about fourteen scholarship O linemen, you know, that you know, we need we need we need to get them better and if they're not what we're looking for, we need to out recruit them. What numbers would you like to have there? Uh, more than what we got now. You know, that that my, my philosophy is what we'll have, we're looking for probably five, six O linemen and five, six D linemen right now. And we're not graduating that many. You know, so we're, we're going to try to up those numbers a little bit and, and try to identify guys that can help us win and, and go recruit the heck out of them. Coach, what has made Rutgers defense so successful? Uh, two things stand out more than anything. Uh, you know, obviously turnovers. They've, they've got 25, which is. You know, in seven games, you're looking at three and a half turnovers a game, which is spectacular. There's a reason that leads the nation, you know. And, and that's not always just being in the right place at the right time. That's attacking the football. You know, they got, they got good team speed on defense, and they attack the ball. And they make plays on the ball, whether it's, you know, in the, in the dude's hands or if it's in the air. You know, I mean, they, they do a good job of attacking the football. Uh, red zone defense, they're pretty good. They're kind of their first in the conference, I think. The opponents have been in there 20 times and only scored on 12. You know, they do a good job of blocking kicks and they do a good job of creating turnovers, especially in the red zone.